Okay, I'm back with another case study. Now, I haven't did a case study in a while. So uh, this one is in honor of cancer season. I'm sure a lot of my viewers know about this story. And I've been wanting to uh, do a case study on her for a while. So I finally got it out. So let's get started. So this is about uh, Nadia Suleiman. And she was known as Octomom. So that's because she had she gave birth to eight babies and she ended up breaking a record. So this is about when cancer goes too far because she's a cancer. So let me just pull up the slideshow. Okay, here she is with some of her kids. Now she has 14 kids in all. Let me just get into this story. All right, so let's get started. So the backstory, and I got this from Wikipedia. Now, Nadia Denise Dow Suleiman, born Natalie Denise Suleiman, July 11th, 1975, so she's my age. So the fact that she's an 11, you know, that reinforces that cancer energy. You might as well say compounds that cancer energy, but not in a good way. And I'll get deeper into this. Now, known as Octomom in the media is an American media personality who came to international attention when she gave birth to octuplets in January 2009. The Suleiman octuplets are only the second full set of octuplets to be born alive in the United States. One week after their birth, they surpassed the previous worldwide survival rate for a complete set of octuplets set by the Chukwu octuplets in 1998. The circumstances of their high order, multiple birth, led to controversy in the field of assisted reproductive technology, as well as an investigation by the Medical Board of California of the fertility specialists involved. Public reaction turned negative when it was discovered that Suleiman already had six other children and was unemployed and on public assistance programs. Suleiman conceived the octuplets and her six older children via in vitro fertilization. So she didn't have any of her kids through natural means. Although she initially denied ever having used public assistance, she confirmed in April 2012 on NBC's Today Show that she was indeed on public assistance. In 1996, Suleiman married Marco Gutierrez. They separated in 2000. Gutierrez filed for divorce in November 2006, which was finalized in January 2008. In an interview with Inside Edition, Gutierrez explained their divorce was due to failed attempts to have children. Suleiman was desperate and wanted to try in vitro fertilization, but Gutierrez disliked the idea of test tube babies and refused to take part in the procedure. Gutierrez said he is not the father of any of Suleiman's children and that he wishes his ex-wife the best. In 2009, Suleiman stated that she had six embryos left over from her previous IVF treatments. She explained that she requested all of the remaining embryos be transferred into her uterus at one time. A woman her age would normally have a maximum of two or three embryos transferred. Suleiman states that part of her reasoning for attempting a sixth pregnancy was so that the frozen embryos not be destroyed. Fresh cycles, and this is the, the whole cycle thing, wait till I get to it. Fresh cycles, keyword on cycles, were always done despite there being available frozen embryos stored with Dr. Kamrava. In June 2011, during a California Medical Board investigation, it was found that Kamrava had transferred 12 embryos. 12 embryos, keep in mind that number 12, which the board found to be an extreme departure from standard of care. In summer 2012, Suleiman appeared in the adult film Octomom Home Alone, produced by Wicked Pictures. Did anybody see this film? I, I wouldn't dare to see this. <laughs> the film is solely of Nadia Suleiman in solo scenes with the aid of sex toys. There are no other actors. The film was released on June 20th, 2012. In December 2012, Octomom Home Alone received four AVN 
Award nominations and won for Best Celebrity Video. She also works as an adult entertainer, dancing in men's clubs. She released a single called Sexy Party with Adam Barta in September and caused a controversy when he was seen holding her breast surrounded by crucifixes on a bed on the compact disc artwork. She stated she was inspired by the work of Madonna. Here's her chart right here. So I'll be going back and forth between this graphic and also the bullet point in this PowerPoint. But uh, as you can see, if you see her fifth house, Cancer in the fifth, heavily populated with the sun, Saturn, you could throw Juno in the mix. And uh, I do have her birth time. So uh, it's been confirmed via Astro theme. So I was really happy to uh, get that situation uh, you know, set. So um, she's an Aquarius rising, as you can see. And you know, Aquarius is the sign of uniqueness, the sign of unconvention, um, the sign of things being weird, things being, you know, perverted even. So let's get into her chart. So first we're gonna talk about the numerology. Now her birth number 11, that compounds the cancer moon energy, compounds pregnancy and motherhood theme also, uh, but with serious conflict. My bad with the uh, misspelling. Life path number four. Oh, and uh, let's not forget, uh, little Kim is an 11. You know, she got some uh, serious internal conflict going on. So Nadia Suleiman being an 11, has serious conflict going on. And her situation uh, is dealing with motherhood, which is very indicative of cancer. And with little Kim, it's race, which is very indicative of cancer. So the 11 can play out in different ways, but just understand that it's a number of conflict, internal and external. And it can bring inter interventions from third parties. So that could be the IVF doctor, but also uh, the intervention from CPS, which happened after the fact. Now her life path number is four, that echoes her Aquarius ascendant. She also has Uranus trine ascendant, and that could deal with her having an unconventional or unique life in the most general sense. It could also deal with her having a sense of entitlement and her being able to get what she wants. Also her breaking the mold, breaking that record. Now, her vertex is at the 14th degree of Virgo. I thought that was interesting because she does have 14 children in all, and the vertex can be a faded point in the chart, and they were all in vitro. So with her vertex being in the seventh house in Virgo, Virgo deals with the doctor. In vitro is about that intervention, and the seventh house deals with intervention. Now she has the 12th degree of Taurus on her third house cuts and the 12th degree of Scorpio on her ninth house cuts. So she got 12 embryos implanted in all, eight survived. So that's where that, you know, that 12 can be represented in, in that. And the fact that it's on the third house cuts, that deals with, because the third house deals with communication. So she told the doctor to put all of the embryos in. And because she got that Aquarius hookup with Uranus trying to send it, she was able to get what she wanted. So that 12th degree, and she also said she didn't want the embryos to go to waste. That's that 12th degree Taurus on the third house cuts. And that 12th degree could deal with excess. It's also a number of sacrifice and victimization. So some of the embryos were sacrificed so that she could have as many as possible. You could look at it that way. Or you could even look at it like she's sacrificing her uh, health and well-being as a result of getting these embryos implanted because that's taking a big risk for the babies and for herself. So the whole safety thing, you know, she's like throwing caution to the wind. And the 12th degree of Scorpio, that could deal with the excess births. Now, she got eight degrees Gemini on the IC, otherwise known as the fourth house cusp, eight degrees Sagittarius on the midheaven. So again, she's known as Octo Mom. And that midheaven can deal with, you know, your reputation. 
So she did, she's known for having the octuplets, octomom. There's that eight right there. So, and eight degrees Gemini. Gemini is the sign of the twins, also deals with the multiple births, all that. Sagittarius is the sign of excess. Here's her chart again. So, as you can see, Aquarius rising, Uranus is trining her ascendant. So, that helped her out a great deal. And as you can see, the 12th degree that I was talking about on the third house cuts, 12th degree on the ninth house cuts. And then she got the, oh, I forgot to even mention this. She got the eighth degree of Aries on the second, eighth degree of Libra on the uh, eighth. So she got eight twice. So I didn't even see that, first of all. But I was looking at this, the eighth degree of Gemini on the fourth. Fourth house deals with the womb. Eighth degree Sagittarius on the midheaven. So that octo mom is showing through her chart. I'm telling you, like this numerology is the truth. Numbers carry energy and it transfers over into everything that numbers are associated with, including degrees in the chart. The underlying cause, of course, you know, I always got to talk about the nodes. The nodes deal with the underlying cause of why a person does what they do. So her south node is at the 28th degree of Tor uh, Taurus in the third house. So that 28th degree that deals with children, also influence. And she was very much influenced through that marriage because her husband said that, you know, it was the divorce that, um, you know, they got divorced because of the um, children issue. So that like sent her over the edge. Also the 28th degree can be a sexual degree. Now with that Taurus self node, possessiveness is a problem and that's true for Taurus self node in general. Also self-esteem issues, stubbornness, money problems, the need for fecundity. Fecundity is basically propagating your species, you know, spreading your seed or having as much offspring as possible. And that's very Taurus because Taurus does deal with, you know, spreading your seed, um, you know, implanting even, hoarding the embryos. So remember I said that she didn't want to, she said that she didn't want the embryos to go to waste which is why she told the, told the doctor to uh, insert all of them. First she said, keep them. And then she said, um, insert all of them. Now that 28th degree also deals with the cycles of the IVF treatments. So remember in the backstory part, it was saying cycles. So that 28th degree does deal with cycles. Now her south node is squaring her Aquarius ascendant. So that could deal with a lack of common decency, lacking independence due to hoarding children, being very superficial, which leads to the plastic surgery because she has had some um, serious plastic surgery done to her face and I think her breasts as well. Uh, separation, uh, divorce sent her over the edge, media backlash, that's that third house south note, due to truth being exposed about financial assistance. So she really started getting the backlash when it came out that she was on public assistance. South Node, Queen Kong's Uranus, and Libra in the eighth. Again, divorce, separation sent her over the edge due to her possessiveness. And then, you know, she's just naturally stubborn. So she was like, I have to have the, these babies some way, somehow. So with that Uranus, Uranus deals with artificial means. Libra deals with intervention. South Node square Venus and the moon in the seventh house. So marriage woes regarding inability to have children trigger the South Node tendencies towards stubbornness and a need for validation, but also points to the IVF doctor's enabling of her South Node tendencies. So I don't know if I want to go back to the chart right now because I'm going to have to go through all these slides. But she has cancer on the sixth house cuts. And that deals with the doctor. And remember what I said about the seventh house, that's intervention. 
So the moon being in the seventh, that's representing the doctor intervening so that she can have babies. But this also deals with, oh, and the moon is conjoined to Venus and Venus rules the eighth house and that eighth house, that's the actual surgical procedures, the implantation. Now, this also deals with her husband though, the marriage that she was in, because the moon also rules her fifth house. So it rules her fifth and her sixth house. So with that, that points to exactly what her ex-husband said, that they got divorced as a result of her inability to have children and her being adamant about children and wanting to go to IVF route and him not being cool with that and all that stuff. Also, you could look at that as um, the self-esteem, her self-esteem takes a dive when she saw other mothers. So Venus conjoined to the moon in the seventh house can also represent other mothers and you know her being jealous. And there is, she does have Hera an aspect to a couple of her planets, and Hera does deal with jealousy. Now her south node is running contra parallel to Eros, and Eros is in the eighth house, 19th degree of Libra. That deals with that poor node that she made. North node at the 28th degree of Scorpio in the ninth house. Remember what I said about that 28th that could deal with children. So in the ninth house, that could deal with a lot of births, Scorpio births. Obsessed with at the aspiration of having children. Aspiration, that's the ninth house. 28th degree, again, children. She may get a lot of money from men because that 28th degree is a sack chasing degree or potentially not saying everybody that's born on the 28th or got the 28th degree prominent, but they can come up through their dealings with others. So I'm looking at that as, cause her North Node is in Scorpio by the way. And that North Node in Scorpio in this lifetime, you know, sexual freedom is a strong theme for her. Also just being sexually open, promiscuous. Also, you know, this could have been her getting a lot of money from foreign men and maybe that's how she was able to finance those fertility uh, treatments. North node parallel arrows, again, that's that porno, but maybe also this is dealing with prostitution. North node conjoined to Eurydice. I'm seeing that as when she was an adult entertainer doing the stripping and stuff like that, because Eurydice was a dancer in terms of uh, mythology, but Eurydice also deals with death. So that can also deal with the deaths of some of those uh, fetuses. North node square ascendant. That deals with the artificial insemina insemination because the ascendant part is the artificial part and the insemination part is that Scorpio. So it's showing that, you know, she was able to give birth via artificial means. Also that points to her plastic surgery, making her just look all jacked up. North node square moon and Venus, obsession with becoming a mother led to going too far, especially once divorced. Now, I'm, I'm hearing fireworks. Now, uh, North Node Queen comes Chiron and Aries in the second. So I was looking at that, like, how did she finance the IVF procedures? Because it's not cheap. Also, I was looking at that as perhaps she's a sex worker because Chiron and Aries is in the second. Also, that deals with her engaging in fraud, welfare fraud. And then I was looking at that, like, I was like, that, that reminded me of them fake duck lips she got. Because you know these aspects will manifest as different in different ways, and um, so you can look at it from different angles. And you know Aries deals with the face, and that North Node in Scorpio can deal with surgery, and Quincunx does deal with things that you adjust, but it can also deal with health issues as well. Now North Node trying Saturn and Cancer in the fifth. She accomplishes her mission, her mission of becoming a mother. North Node, Quincunx, Mercury, and Gemini in the fourth, those are the multiple embryos being implanted because the fourth house deals with the womb. North Node could join to the Arabic part of increase, implanting multiple embryos, multiple births. 
but maybe this also deals with her having a lot of sex and getting money for it. Now here's her chart again. What was it that I was gonna show you guys? Oh yeah, you see how Cancer is spanning the fifth and it begins the sixth house. So this Cancer is very much representing the doctor. So with the moon in Virgo, that's reinforcing the doctor. Conjoined to Venus in the seventh house, Remember I said the seventh house is intervention. And then she got Libra on the eighth, that's surgical intervention, IVF. Venus rules the eighth. This is all about that doctor right here, but it also deals with the situation where her husband, and then also, like I said, it could deal with her comparing herself to other women, you know, feeling insecure, all that type of stuff. She got Pisces intercepted in the first. So, you know, I'll get into that in a minute, but that very much deals with that porno that she did where she was, you know, the masturbation and all. Sex toys even deals with that Aquarius rising because Aquarius, Aquarius does have a pension for sex toys and shit. And um, there was something else I was going to say too. Oh, look at this. Mercury at the 29th degree of Gemini. So like I said, her Mercury is at the 29th degree of Gemini. And what did I say? North Node, Quincunx, Mercury, and Gemini. 29th degree, y'all know what I say about that 29th degree. Number one, it can produce high pressure situations. So, you know, just dealing with the physical part, all them embryos, all them fetuses in the womb, that's a lot of pressure that she was under. Her body, also that deals with a lot of pressure that she's under in terms of the media. And Gemini rules the media. So, yeah. All right, moving along. Aquarius Ascendant. So we're going to get into her chart rulers right now. So just by looking at her chart rulers alone, and she got two of them because she's an Aquarius rising. So she got Saturn and Uranus as her chart rulers. So I take both into account when I'm interpreting a chart because you could get a lot of insight by looking at when you got a sign that got two planets ruling it, look at both and see how they're interacting because it'll give you a lot of insight. So we're going to look at Saturn and Uranus and how that's playing out. Now, her ascendant is at the 24th degree of Aquarius. So that 24 degree, is a, it's a very fortunate degree. It's blessed in a lot of respects. That could deal with she often gets her way, especially because it's the 24th degree of Aquarius. And she got that classic Aquarian smirk. So when, uh, last week I posted on Facebook about uh, that Aquarian smirk and how um, that shit just gets on my nerves. And it's that whole... I know something you don't know type of thing. And when I, when I saw that she was an Aquarius rising, I was like, there it goes, because she has that smirk. So let me just hit escape, because I want to pull up a picture, so a couple of pictures of her so you can see what I'm talking about. See that smirk that I'm talking about? That's that Aquarian smirk. A lot of Aquarians got that smirk. Look at that smirk. Even in court, she got the smirk. Look at it. Look at that. That's what I mean. She got that classic Aquarian smirk. All right, moving back. Okay, so Aquarius ascendant. So like I said, 24 degrees Aquarius, she often gets her way. She often gets what she wants. She can also get a lot of money with that 24th degree. Um, she got that classic Aquarian smirk, like I said, but this also deals with her breaking the mold that sense of entitlement and also being very weird. She got Saturn, her chart ruler, at the 22nd degree of Cancer in the fifth house. So there it is right there. Motherhood theme is reinforced. Children. So she's, so this is where, you know, you take the numerology into account because she's born on July 11th. That 11 compounds that Cancer energy. Then when you're like looking at her Aquarius ascending, you're like, okay, that's not motherhood. But then you look at the chart rulers, Saturn in particular, look, it's in Cancer, 22nd degree. And that 22nd degree reinforces that Aquarius ascendant. So again, that whole weirdness, 
breaking the mold, that sense of entitlement. So Saturn and Cancer in the fifth house, fifth house deals with children. That's the motherhood theme, children, 22nd degree, like I said, record breaker, unique circumstances, and also artificial means. So having children do artificial means. Saturn is conjoined to her son. Having children is an ambition for her. And this can point to overcompensation for her inability to have children naturally because Saturn can deal with what's lacking in your life. And as a result of what's lacking, some people are prone to overcompensate for what's lacking. And that's Saturn's doing. Now Saturn is squaring Jupiter and Aries in the second. That's her exercising poor judgment, being on public assistance and being judged for that. Her Saturn is squaring Chiron and Aries in the second, getting caught up trying to buck the system with respect to public assistance again, because that second house that deals with money, Chiron is about bucking the system. And that Saturn deals with government. So here she is again. All right. Her Saturn is in trying to the Scorpio North. No ambition is achieved in terms of her having those birds. And also you could look at it as successful in vitro fertilization. Now Saturn and Sesky Square Mid Heaven, judgment and condemnation due to motherhood choices. Also Saturn is in Sesky Square to Neptune in Sagittarius in the 10th house. That could deal with scandal. Her bringing shame upon herself and her family can also deal with her son watching her porno. Yeah, her son her son was caught by the uh, nanny or some housekeeper or something watching her his own mom's porno, and people heard about it. So that aspect right there that's pointing to that because Saturn's in the fifth that could represent her children, one of her children, and it rules the twelfth house. That twelfth house is the porno. And Neptune rules intercepted Pisces in the first house. That's her being in that porno and doing her that masturbation shit. So this chick is off the chain. Like she's wow. Saturn can join to the fixed star Pollux. Now Pollux is one of two twins. Pollux is the immortal twin. This is interesting because she got she got both of the twins in her chart. And the uh these twins can represent actual twins. Now, this is the immortal twin, but Pollux can also deal with contemplative speculation, meaning like you're thinking about how you could make a uh, gain from a certain investment or whatever. Having audacity also deals with astrology. So I feel like that's where I come in because it's like, you never know. She might see this video because she is very, you know, egotistical and vain and all that type of stuff. And that's what I was talking about, about when I was, went to, did the live stream, that cancer vanity. So she's one of them dark-sided cancers that got that vanity issue. And it makes sense because that she got that cancer energy in her fifth house. So yeah, so yeah, uh, Nadia, I, 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 I'm giving you some attention, some narcissistic supply even uh, by doing your chart. So maybe you'll learn something now uh, if you see this. Now, uh, ruin, disgrace, death calamity and she did have some deaths of some uh, some of the fetuses died of course but that's the immortal twin so i'm seeing that as representing the twins that actually survived or the octuplets that survived saturn this is interesting saturn's running parallel to siwa siwa is, is an asteroid that deals with fertility so this deals with her fertility issues and her inability to get pregnant because again, Saturn deals with what's lacking, limitations, deficiencies. But that can also represent her ambition to get pregnant. Uranus, co-ruler of her chart, is at 28 degrees. There's that 28 again, children. Cycles, Libra in the eighth house. These are the IVF procedures or the cycles, as they called it. That 28 is a... Uh, degree, a number of cycles, breaking record in number of burps. So again, her chart is basically pointing to this whole fiasco with the octuplets and the 14 children. So 
her, basically she needs to just wrap it up and just retire because she's already achieved what she needed to achieve in life. And when I say needed, I'm not saying in a good way. Urine is trying to send it. That is the successful IVF treatments, like I said before, and also her being able to get her way. Urine is sextal moon. That is successful implantation in the womb. Also record breaking aspect in terms of pregnancies and her being revolutionary because again, this was like, nobody's really seen this. Uranus opposition Jupiter, being judged by a mob or group of people, being judged on social media, getting huge when pregnant. If you saw, you could Google pictures of her when she was pregnant. And I remember seeing all those veins being prominent on her belly. So Uranus deals with veins. So that opposition is like veins being popped out and her getting real big. Uranus opposition Chiron. This is a uh, prominent, well, this is present in a lot of people's charts. So you gotta really pay attention to the house placement. So uh, Chiron is in her second house. Uranus is in the eighth. I'm seeing this as shock and awe, but also funny money. So how, you know, again, how was she getting that money? And also her feeling entitled to buck the system with the whole welfare fraud and all that, collecting welfare while she's working, you know, getting money by sucking dick or whatever the fuck she was doing. Uranus Queen Kong South Node. Practicality goes out the window because that's Taurus South Node deals with practicality. Issues with money. Self-worth derived through artificial means. And you can look at this Uranus in the eighth. Queen Kong South know like she has this entitlement to other people's money, including that could be the government, all that type of stuff. And Aquarius does deal with government entitlement benefits. Uranus is running contra parallel to Hera. So this is that jealousy asteroid that I was talking about. And this can also deal with hatred from groups. And I think it was somebody who dropped a dime on her about the public assistance thing. That's how they found out. So somebody took, you know, could have took revenge upon her because Hera is the asteroid of revenge, vindictiveness. Uranus can join to Nemesis. You can look at this as Nemesis is the one you put blame on. So with Uranus and Nemesis being in Libra in the eighth house, again, that's the interventionist, which would be the doctor. But then on the flip side, you could look at this as groups of people going after her, condemning her, her receiving scorn on social media. Uranus is running contra parallel to the asteroid Tisiphone. And Tisiphone is at the 11th degree of Leo in the sixth house. That's her being judged harshly by groups of people or also on the internet. Here are some other factors that come into play in her chart. Her moon is conjoined to Venus in the seventh. I already talked about that. Moon rules the fifth. Fifth house begins at the Aries point of Cancer. Now that Aries point, and I recently did a chart for somebody that had the Aries point. Yeah, I just sent it. She has the Aries point of Capricorn on the ascendant and the Aries point of Cancer on the descendant. Now, Octomom has the Aries point of cancer on the fifth house. Now that Aries point is like a faded degree. It's the zero degree of any cardinal sign. So that Aries point can deal with destined or faded events that deal with an external force or an external party. So again, that's dealing with that intervention, that doctor's influence. Especially because Venus, again, it rules the eighth through Libra. Libra is the sign of intervention. Mars and Taurus try moon and Venus. Her finding the IVF doctor who would do such a crazy thing. So remember I said that moon conjunct Venus, it represents not just her partner, but it represents her doctor, that IVF doctor. And Mars still is with you looking for things, finding things, discovering things. And it's in Taurus, which means that maybe he even gave her a deal on the, he probably gave her a special discount or whatever. He was probably like, if you keep coming back and getting these cycles, I'll give you a break on, you know, the cost or whatever. So this doctor was low down and like trifling and shady, disgusting. Mercury trying to send it. He should be prosecuted. 
Mercury trying to send it. This is her getting media attention, her having multiple fetuses artificially inseminated, again, because Mercury is in the fourth house. And again, what she says goes. So she was able to request it, and she got what she wanted at the end of the day. Her Mars is in quincunx to Neptune. Neptune is ruling interceptive Pisces in the first. That's her doing something strange for a piece of change because Mars is in Taurus. Also, it was that awkward because somebody uh, described that porno as awkward, masturbation porno, and also her just engaging in shameless behavior. Also, the scandal that she created. Mars in Taurus, quincunx Pluto and Libra. That's the welfare fraud. Her possibly engaging in the sex trade obsessed with what others have and she has a yacht and that yacht is including mars neptune and pluto again that's that porno when you bring them all together creating a scandal especially regarding the welfare fraud so people were like she has some nerve and i always say that the yacht is where you get what you want everything's going well and then next thing you know boom something comes along and throws a wrench in your game so this can also deal with that CPS intervention. She has Juno at the ninth degree of cancer in the fifth house. That deals with her relationship problems. Again, remember what her ex-husband said. They got divorced because she wanted IVF treatment. He wasn't down with it. So this is motherhood pregnancy being the main bone of contention in a marriage. Mercury sextal Chiron, record breaker for octuplets. Sun conjoined to Castor. This is the other twin that I'm talking about. So she got two fixed stars. Two, she got both twins prominent in her chart. So her son is conjoined to Castor. This is the mortal twin. So the fact that she got both in her chart, to me, that's representing that, yeah, some of the embryos survived, some of them didn't. This deals with sudden fame or loss, mischief. And distinguishing herself through motherhood. I put the motherhood part in there because of the cancer influence. Now, her son is running pa parallel to Oscalopia. That is an asteroid that deals with healthcare, doctors. It's at the 24th degree of cancer. So this is representing the doctor who made motherhood possible for her. And, uh, and that's right on the sixth house cusp, if my memory serves. Yeah, because she got the 24th degree of cancer. If my memory serves me correctly, on the six house cuts. So that means that Oscalopia is right on her six house cuts. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Moon parallel Isis. That is at the seventh degree of Taurus. Isis can deal with things that are scattered. So I'm seeing that as a messy house because when CPS came to visit or whatever, they did discover that her house was a mess. But this can also deal with those embryos that she kept on hold. And Mars is conjoined to Isis. So again, there's that messiness theme, things scattered everywhere. And her moon is running contra parallel to the asteroid Cassandra. Cassandra is an asteroid that deals with advice. So with it running contra parallel and it being at the zero degree of Scorpio, that could deal with her not heeding advice from, you know, the maybe the IVF dude did try to warn her. I'm sure he did for, you know, good practice sake or whatever like that. But once that money was waved in, or in his face, that could deal with this, the money being waved in his face, almost like a bribe. I guess that could be a bribe. So yeah, but I'm also seeing that as lawyer fees as well, perhaps. Because Cassandra can deal with counsel and counsel can be in the form of a lawyer. Now she has Venus running parallel to, to, to Tiffany. To Tiffany showed up before. Again, this is her being judged harshly. Also being punished for fraud where she has to pay back the money to uh, the state for uh, the welfare fraud. Mars is conjoined to Hamal. Hamal is a, a rather unfortunate fixed star. It does mean that, you know, it can mean that a person is very determined to go their own way in life. They could be very stubborn and headstrong. Also, Hamal can pertain to violence, cruelty, brutality. It can also represent the healer as well. She might be in a rough sex with this. Uh, I'm pretty sure she is with this uh, conjunction. She probably like to get tied up, horse whipped, choked. Now, Neptune is conjoined to Antares, and this could deal with success, which can be obsessive. Pluto is running parallel to Ras Ahag, and that can deal with the desire to heal a wound. 
So, you know, perhaps she was dealing with some abuse at an earlier time in her life or whatever like that. And maybe she sees children as something that she could hold on to for, you know, comfort and self-worth and all that type of stuff. And that is it. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Again, you know, her birth number is very much indicative of all of that stuff you see in her chart. And it makes you wonder, you know, again, about the whole free will thing. How much free will do we really have? Because it really looks like from her chart, of course, she was destined to go through all this. Now, she could have made, you know, we do have free will to a certain extent where we can make choices. But the way her chart is set up, number one, you know, I didn't even get into the point part about, you know, her mental health issues, which is could be indicative of that third house south node afflicting the ascendant and other things in her chart. So yeah, she's definitely dealing with some mental health issues naturally. She would have to make a decision like this. So as much as I think she's a despicable person, I'm not going to go hard on her too much because she's definitely off her rocker in terms of mental health. So um, that cancer on um, that cancer on the sixth with the moon conjoined to Venus and that being uh, squared to that uh, third house south node, that could do it. Wait a minute. I see, sir. But yeah, so let me just go back to her chart real quick just to wrap things up. So yeah, so as you can see, these squares right here, third house deals with your mind. Then she has Mercury at the 29th degree of Gemini. Mercury deals with the mind. Gemini deals with the mind at 29th degree. Like I said, it's nothing nice. She got cancer on the sixth. Moon in Virgo, that reinforces the mental health theme, conjoined to Venus, square in the nodes. Oh, let's not forget that uh, it's a wide square with, um, I'm going to you know, you could kind of, count that Y square with Neptune. But yeah, she got it bad. So let me know what you think in the comment section. And if you would like a reading, you could go to my website at rabina.com. Peace, many blessings, and I'll be back with more videos.